Okay, this is section 2.10 in the textbook. It's balancing chemical reactions. Kind of through observations, I've kind of realized something that students don't even know how to count the atoms in the compound. So I'm starting out by giving you a balanced chemical reaction. This is one iron, three sulfates, plus six ammonias, plus six waters, goes to form two iron three hydroxides plus three ammonium sulfates. So on the reactant side, for the iron sulfate, there's a coefficient of one here, even though nothing is written. So that means one times two is two irons. One times, and then when I have parentheses, it becomes a little bit more complicated because I have to do the coefficient times outside the parentheses times what's inside the parentheses. So for sulfur, I've got one times the three times one. That gives me three sulfurs. For the oxygens, it's still one times three times four. So basically three times four is 12. <clears throat> for the ammonium, there's no parentheses. It's simply six times one for the nitrogen. Give me six nitrogens. And six times three is three, I'm sorry, it's 18 hydrogens. For the waters, again, no parentheses, six times two gives me 12 hydrogens, and six times one gives me six oxygens. So when I look at this, even though I have three compounds, I actually only have five different elements present. Okay, So for the iron, it's only in one spot, there's two. Same thing for the sulfur. The oxygen, however, appears both as iron three sulfate and in water. So there's 12 oxygens from the iron three sulfate and six from the water, so the 12 plus the six gives me 18 total on the reactant side. Nitrogen's only in one place, there's six. Hydrogen's in two places also. There's 18 hydrogens because of the ammonia, and there are 12 because of the water. So the 18 plus 12 gives me 30. So these are the, these are the number counts of the balanced equation, okay? I go to the product side, okay? Again, it's the coefficient times the subscript. So for iron, it's two times one is two irons. If there's parentheses, it's got to be what's outside the parentheses and then inside the parentheses. So two times three times one gives me six oxygens. And for the hydrogen, two times three times one gives me six hydrogens. I move on to the ammonium sulfate. <clears throat> Another set of parentheses. So I've got three times two times one is six nitrogen. Yeah, six nitrogens. For the hydrogens, it's three times two is six. And then six times four gives me 24 hydrogens, or it could just be, you could just say three times two times four, also 24. For the sulfurs, it's three times one, it gives me three sulfurs. And for the oxygen, it's three times the four, which gives me 12 oxygens. So again, when I look at my elements, I've got two irons, because iron's only one place. Oxygen was in two places again. I've got six oxygens from the iron three hydroxide and I've got 12 from the ammonium sulfate. So that adds up to be 18. Hydrogens also from two different places. I've got six from the ammonium from the iron three hydroxide and I've got 24 from the ammonium sulfate. So the six plus 24 gives me 30. Um, nitrogens are from only one place, and there's six of those. Sulfur is only from one place, and there's three of those. So, in a balanced reaction, you'll notice that I have two irons, two irons, three sulfurs, three sulfurs, 18 oxygens, 18 oxygens, six nitrogens, six nitrogens, 30 hydrogens, and 30 hydrogens. So, in a balanced reaction, all my atoms are the same on both the reactant side and on the product side. Now, to start applying this, we add coefficients such that each atom is equal on both sides of the reaction arrow. I start out by adding, if I look at this reaction, it's magnesium solid plus oxygen goes to form magnesium oxide. If I look at the magnesium first, because I tend to work from left to right, magnesium I've got one and one, so I would do nothing. Oxygens, though, I have two here and only one here, so I need to put a coefficient of two in front of this. When I did that, I changed my magnesiums. Now it's not one and one anymore. Now I have two magnesiums over here and only one over here, so I need to finish by putting a two over there. So that's a very simple one. 
Typically, you want to balance atoms that only occur one in one place on either side of the equation, and then hydrogens and oxygens. And always double check at the end to make sure the coefficients are the smallest whole numbers, which means that if I had 2, 2, 2, and 2, then I've accidentally multiplied by 2, and I need to divide all those by 2. Okay, So I usually give half credit for those. All right, so let's look at this. Okay, carbon only appears on one place. So I've only got three elements, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, carbon. I have four carbons here and one here. So I'm going to start by putting a coefficient of a four in front of the carbon dioxide. I now look, there's no other thing else other than hydrogen and oxygen. So I'm going to look at my, and oxygen I want to do last because it's only one side here, but it's on two different elements there. So I'm going to do it last. So I'm going to do hydrogen first. So I got 10 here, and everything I need to do has to be multiplied by 2. So 10 divided by 2 gives me 5. So now I have 10 hydrogens. Now I look at it. I have got 4 times 2 is 8 oxygens from carbon dioxide, plus the 5 times 1 for, ox for water. So I did the wrong side first. Sorry. Oxygen is only appearing one side here, I have two. The other side, I have the eight plus the five give me 13. Anything I put here, because this is an O2 molecule, is gonna be multiplied by two. So if I put a 13 here, then I would actually have 26 on this side, okay? So what I need to do is I need to put a 13 halves. So now 13 halves times two gives me the 13 oxygens that I need to match on this side. However, I cannot leave a fraction in my reaction. Okay? So how do you get rid of a fraction? You multiply by the denominator. But at this point, all my elements are balanced. I have four carbons, I have 10 hydrogens, and I have 13 oxygens. So if I multiply, I can't multiply just this by two. I have to multiply the whole equation by two. So multiply the equation by 2 because 2 is the denominator. If it was 3, then it would have been 3. So the denominator of the fraction means, just means the bottom part of the fraction. So when I do that, nothing written here, it means a 1. So 1 times 2 gives me 2. 13 halves times 2 gives me 13. 4 times 2 gives me 8. And 5 times 2 gives me 10. And the last step is to make sure that they can't all be divided by some common number. Okay, All of these can be divided by 2 except for 13. And so because of that, this is the balanced reaction. So now let's do some problems out of the book. So number 28 says balance the following equations. Okay, I have <clears throat> calcium phosphate. Phosphoric acid goes to form calcium dihydrogen phosphate. Okay, So I want to start with things that are only on one side of the equation. It's going to be calcium. So I have three calciums over here and only one over here. So I'll put a coefficient of three. Now, the phosphorus are in two different places and so is the oxygen, but hydrogen is only in one place. Okay, I've got three here. And now, when I put my coefficient of 3 there, I put 3 times 2 is 6, and then that 6 times 2 is 12. So what 12 divided by 3 gives me what? 4. So I put a 4 there. Now I want to look at my, I've changed all three of the compounds, so hopefully at this point my phosphoruses and my oxygens are balanced. Okay. For phosphorus, I have 1 times 2 times 1 is 2, so 2, here's 4, so 2 plus 4 is 6. When I look over here, I've got 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, so I have 6 on this side and 6 on this side, so they're balanced. For the oxygens, I've got 1 times 2 is 2, times 4 is 8, so 8. And then 4 times 4 is 16, so 8 plus 4, I'm sorry, 8 plus 8, I messed that up again, sorry, 16. 4 times 4 is 16, 16 plus the 8 is 24. And here I've got 3 times 2 is 6, 
and 6 times 4 is 24. So I have 24 oxygens on this side and 24 oxygens on this side. So it is balanced. Okay. B. I have <clears throat> manganese 4 oxide plus hydrochloric acid goes to form manganese 2 chl chloride plus chlorine gas plus water. So which element am I going to start with? Well, it only appears on one in one place on both the reactant side and the product side. And the answer is manganese. So I have one manganese here and one manganese here, so I'm not doing anything with manganese. What else only appears on one side? And it is the hydrogens. So I've got one hydrogen here and two hydrogens here. Right? No. Oops. I should have done the oxygen first. Sorry. I didn't see oxygen. Okay. I've got two oxygens here and I've got only one oxygen here. So I need to <clears throat> multiply or put two in front of the, oh, there's the manganese, the oxygens. I need to put two in front of the oxygens, okay? Now I've got four hydrogens on this side and only one on this side. So I put a four for the hydrogens. And now I need to, since I've made changes to everything but the chlorine, I need to check my chlorine. I've got four chlorine on this side. And on this side, I've got two and two is four. So that's a balanced reaction. If not, I could have added it just to this, and I would not have changed any of my other ones. It may have been a fraction, but that I can I showed you how to deal with. Last one for this one is sodium thiosulfate plus iodine goes to form sodium iodide plus sodium persil. Yeah, persulfate. Okay, so I'm gonna start not with sodiums because sodium is in one, two different places over here. I'm actually gonna start with my sulfurs. I think. We'll see which way I put it in here. So here I've got two, and over here I've got four. Okay, so did I do that first? Yes. All right, so I put a two here. So now two times two gives me four. One times four, two gives me four. Okay. Oxygens. I've got two times three is six, and one times six is six. So oxygens are balanced. So I go to my iodines. I've got two iodines here. And only one over here, so I need to put a 2 in front of the sodium iodide. And now that I've made changes to all, or have looked at all the different compounds, I want to check my sodiums. So 2 times 2 is 4 sodiums, 2 times 1 is 2, and 1 times 2 is 2. So 2 and 2 gives me the 4 sodiums on both sides, so this is now balanced. And so in all these, when I have a 1, I don't need to check to make sure that I need to buy it through. All right. The last type of problem is one in which they include nomenclature and balancing. So it says sodium, solid sodium metal reacts with water to give or gives a solution of sodium hydroxide and releasing hydrogen gas. So there's all my compounds. Write a balanced equation for the reaction using complete formulas for the compounds with the phase labels. So I'm going to start with my sodium metal. So sodium metal is just Na, and it tells me a solid, so it has a solid there. Reacts with, so that's going to be plus water. Water is H2O, and water is typically a liquid unless it's specified. Gives, it's going to be my reaction arrow. Sodium hydroxide is NaOH, and it's a solution, so it's aqueous. And plus Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas is one. Hydrogen is one of the seven diatomic molecules. Okay, so it's H2, and it's a gas. So there's my compounds. Now I need to balance it. Okay, looking at this, I've got one sodium, one sodium. Um, oxygen also only appears one place. I've got one oxygen and one oxygen, and I've got two hydrogens and one plus two is three hydrogens. Okay. So I have to make a change somewhere on this to change the number of hydrogens. Since I've checked everything else first, okay, I want to change something either that the sodium stay the same or the hydrogen stay the same. Okay, so I can change the hydrogens by making, I can change this one to making it two by doing what? I do, how would I make there's one, so how would I make this only one? I would add a fraction of one half, okay? 
Again, now everything's balanced. I got one, so one sodium, one sodium. I've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one oxygen, one oxygen. Okay. But again, I can't have the fraction. I need to multiply by whatever the bottom half of that fraction is. So I need to multiply the whole equation times two. And when I do that, I end up with two sodiums, two waters, two sodium hydroxides, and then one hydrogen gas. If I give this type of problem on the test, I degrade it as parts. So each symbol here would be partial credit. Then based on what you wrote here, not if it was correct or not, but based on what you actually wrote down for this, I then look at how it's balanced. Okay, so I do them as two basically separate types of problems. And that is the end of balancing reactions.